بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Dear brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله It gives me great pleasure to introduce Dr. Bilal Phillips to you to speak about the rights of non-Muslims and our responsibility towards them. Alhamdulillah, I think truly that Dr. Bilal Phillips doesn't need much introduction now. He's so well known in this country and all around the world. And perhaps he's written so many books on Islam that it's, it's quite mind-boggling to wonder where he gets the time to do everything he does, mashallah. And for those of you who are, who are internet users and use the World Wide Web, maybe you've already accessed his website where you can get much information from Islam. So really, I think he's very well known and we don't need to go into every single book that he has written, inshallah. But anyhow, the topic is the right of non-Muslims and our responsibility, our heavy responsibility towards them. And this includes some subtopics upholding the noble qualities of Islam, the non-Muslims as our neighbors, presenting the truth with good manners and wisdom, and clarifying the wrongfulness of terrorism and extremism in Islam. Alhamdulillah, after the talk, perhaps you'd like to field some questions about, if you could keep it to the topics in hand, and there will be some microphones, roving microphones, in the hall so that you can put your questions inshallah so without further ado Dr. Bilal Phillips thank you brothers Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala wasuli al-kirim wa ala ali wa ashabi wa man istanna bi sunnati la yawm al-deen all praise is due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings on his last prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and on all those who follow the path of righteousness until the last day. The topic, the rights of non-Muslims and our responsibility towards them, is fundamentally a topic addressing the responsibility of da'wah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with the message of Islam, through the efforts of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who dedicated his life to conveying the word of Allah to us it has reached us it's a blessing that we have and we have a responsibility to convey that message to those around us that is basically the <clears throat> rights of non-muslims uh, over us in this particular context. And that right has been stressed in the Quran when Allah told uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, This is in the 16th chapter, verse 125. Call to the way of your Lord with wisdom and uh, good preaching. In instructing Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu because the fact that the Quran, though initially revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu its message, its instructions uh, continue to everyone who would read it afterwards. So it is addressing us directly. And this is a command, an instruction in the Quran to act on this. Uh, furthermore, Allah goes on to say in the 41st chapter, verse 33, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهُ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And there is none better in speech than one who calls to Allah and does righteous deeds and says, indeed, I am among the Muslims. This is the best the best thing that we can say. 
the most praiseworthy form of speech that we can utilize is that of da'wah, calling people to Allah. Doing righteousness, because of course to call people to Allah and not do righteousness is to call them and then dissuade them, discourage them, because of course our actions should be consistent with our speech. <clears throat> and that we say, indeed, we are among the Muslims. We don't hide ourselves. We don't try to disappear into society, uh, whether we are at universities or we're on job sites or whatever. Uh, you know, no one would know we are a Muslim unless we told them. Uh, no, this isn't the way. A Muslim is known. To say we are Muslims. Saying we are Muslims is saying it in words as well as in our daily dealings with them. How we appear even. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in many statements stressed the importance of distinguishing the believers from the disbelievers. This is why you know, he instructed for example, uh, if we wear turbans, he said you should wear caps under your turbans to distinguish yourself from the pagans. He said to grow our beards, trim our mustaches, distinguish ourselves from the pagans. This distinction is something which we need to maintain to establish ourselves as Muslims in the society. We should not be hiding and become invisible. Our women don't have a choice because the hijab requirement makes them very obvious. But unfortunately, for many men, they feel, yes, the women should do this, but for themselves, they can dress like kafirs and, you know, it doesn't matter. Meaning they just, they're, they, they, they're indistinguishable from kafirs. Now, the dress of the country, pants and shirts and these kind of things, of course, are not in and of themselves, you know, we could say kafir dress. It is the dress of the people. However, as Muslims, we have an obligation to use, if we, if we use that particular dress, we should use it or wear it in conformity with Islamic teachings. Meaning that, if one wears pants and we know that the basic design of Western pants is to expose the aura, you know, that is the basic design, that is the basic intent in making pants from a Western pr perspective because the main goal of dress in the West is to promote sexuality, to promote the private parts of the individual to attract the opposite sex. This is the basic goal. So, knowing that, then one has to modify those pants in such a way that they conform with Islamic dress. Uh, we know that for a man, what is between the navel and the knee is considered to be a part of his aura. What is between the navel and the knee. And that should be covered. And we say, when we say covered, just as we will insist on a woman, if she's wearing hijab, if she's wearing a, you know, a um, aerobic bodysuit, you know, right, with a scarf on her head, and she wants to go out like that, you're going to stop her at the door and say, hey, where are you going? You know, she says, well, I'm covered. I'm covered. All that's visible is my face and hands. But hey, you know, you're wearing this bodysuit which is showing all your body parts. Right? You're going to stop her. In the same way, if we wear pants which hug our, uh, our thighs when we walk, when we sit, when we bend, then it is just like the woman wanting to wear that aerobic bodysuit. So, we must wear a top, a shirt, 
which then comes down at least to the area of our knees to cover that area. If we don't modify and wear, you know, large size pants, you know, extra large, so that when we bend, etc., these things, these are not being shown, you know, uh, like the Turkish pants with the crotch around your knees or around your ankles. You know, if you're not prepared to wear those kind of pants, right, then you should wear some uh, very loose pants with a top which is going to come down and cover as a support to cover that area properly. This is part of proper Islamic dress. It's not saying 